Hello scholars, hope you are having a wonderful day. It is beautiful outside. It is our first online session and I'm going to be going over how we should be doing our packets. So first, I have the first reading in the packets that was passed out. And we are going to go over how we should be doing our readings. We are going to start by looking at the questions at the end. This is a good way to know what information we should be looking for as we are reading. So let's take a moment to read these questions together. The first question, what is cellular respiration? We are looking, that is the concept we are looking at in this reading. How do cells get energy and how do they respirate? Do plant cells respire? Do plant cells participate in cell, cellular respiration? What kind of molecules are used for cell, cellular respiration? And give ex specific examples. What is the use of ATP? And give three examples of how ATP is used in the cell. We are also looking at what is the purpose of cellular respiration, what is ATP, and how much usable energy is extracted from one glucose molecule. So, just like we do in readings in class, as we read, we are going to highlight important information, and we will also write notes, observations, and questions in the side. We are going to go through this first reading together. I will read it out loud and I will point out key information and answer some questions for this first reading. And hopefully you will know what to do in future readings. So starting at the very beginning, the introduction, you should be on this page right here, cell biology. Hey, what is a cell? It can easily be said that a cell is the fundamental unit of life, the smallest unit capable of life or the structural and functional unit necessary for life. We have already talked about cells a lot in class, right? They're the basic building blocks of all living organisms. This is not new information. It's said a little bit differently, but it's the same concept we've been working on. Whatever it is, a cell is necessary for life. And as shown above, a cell may be filled with all sorts of structures, each with its own specific function. This concept will discuss some of the fundamental properties of the cell with lessons that include the, the cell structure, the cell structure, transport in and out of the cell, energy metabolism, and cell division and reproduction. Okay, so moving on. At the very top of this next page, we see our learning objectives right here. Define cellular respiration and summarize the significance of ATP. I'm going to highlight these to highlight the importance. This is what we should be looking for as we're reading, and it's reflected by our end questions on the last page. So continuing on, why do you need food? Why do we eat? We've looked into this a little bit, but hopefully this explains it a little bit more. The main reason you need to eat is to get energy. That seems pretty important, so I'm going to highlight that. Food is your body's only supply of energy. However, this energy must be converted from the apple or any other food you eat into an energy source that your body can use. The process of getting energy from your food is called cellular respiration. So this answers our first question. What is cellular respiration? It tells us right here. Cellular res respiration is the process of getting energy from food into your body. So we highlight that and we can write down our answer on the last page. If this is not enough room for you, you can rewrite down here. Make sure you just label which question is which, or you can uh, write your answers on a separate sheet of uh, notebook paper. So what is cellular respiration? How does the food you eat provide energy? When you need a quick boost of energy, you might reach for an, ample, for an apple or a candy bar. But cells do not eat apples or candy bars. These foods need to be broken down so that the cells can use them. Through the process of cellular respiration, the energy in food is changed into energy that can be used by the body's cells. So right there is telling us what cellular, cellular respiration is. The process of cellular respiration, energy in food is changed into energy that can be used by the body's cells. This is why you can get really tired when you haven't eaten for a while because you don't have the molecules from the food to give your body energy. Initially, moving on, initially the sugars in the food you eat are digested into the simple sugar glucose. 
This is something we have seen a lot of. We should be familiar with glucose. We have seen how we eat starches and they break down in our digestive system and turn into the smaller molecule glucose, which then goes into our individual cells. The sugars in the food you eat are digested into the simple sugar glucose, a monosaccharide. This is a big word. This is a concept we are not going to work with with Amplify, but it's basically saying that um, it's a single molecule rather than a chain of molecules. So remember when we looked at starch breaking down into glucose, starch is a molecule made up of multiple glucose molecules. So the glucose molecule is a single molecule by itself. And then the polysaccharide, it mentions in a second, has multiple molecules chained together to make a starch. That's a bit higher level than what we're going into, but that's just so you can understand what it's talking about right here. Okay, so the glucose or the polysaccharide made from the glucose molecules, such as starch, like we just said, starch is made up of a chain of glucose molecules, is, is then passed to the organism that eats the plant. This organism could be you, or it could be the organism that you eat. Either way, it is the glucose molecules that hold the energy. That is another piece of important information that gives us part of our answer on what kind of molecules are used for cellular respiration. It says right here, we need at least glucose to release energy in cellular respiration. So that's one of our molecules. Now moving on to ATP. Specifically during cellular respiration, the energy in, stored in glucose is transferred to ATP. This is a big concept that we will be exploring more as we continue to study this subject. We need energy, obviously. If you have ever, like I said, if you've never not eaten, if you've ever not uh, slept well, you get really tired, you have no energy, you can't do anything, right? You just wanna put your head down, you just wanna to go to sleep, you need that energy to function. So this is how our body gets that energy. We intake food, that food is broken down into glucose molecules, and then through the process of cellular respiration, energy is released to the body from those glucose molecules, okay? ATP or adenosine triphosphate, that's the, the chemical word for ATP, is the chemical energy the cell can use. So I'm gonna highlight that right there because it answers another question. What is ATP? And I will write ATP is adenosine triphosphate or the chemical energy that, the, that cells use. Okay, it is the molecule that provides energy for your cells to perform work, such as moving your muscles as you walk down the street. That is another piece of information that answers our questions. What is the use of ATP? We need at least three examples, but this gives us one. It provides energies for your cells to do work, such as moving your muscles. Right, so now I can go back to my question and I can answer one purpose of ATP. One purpose of ATP is to move your muscles. Okay, and continuing on. But cellular respiration is slightly more complicated than just converting the energy from glucose into ATP. Cellular respiration can be described as the reverse or opposite of photosynthesis. During cellular respiration, glucose in the presence of oxygen, so right there, we see another molecule that is used for cellular respiration, glucose in the presence of oxygen. So now we can add oxygen to our list of molecules needed for cellular respiration. So during cellular respiration, glucose in the presence of oxygen is converted into carbon dioxide and water. Recall that carbon dioxide and water are the starting products of photosynthesis. What are the products of photosynthesis? This is something that you will not know the answer to. We have not looked at photosynthesis as a class yet, but we can very quickly go over the idea. It's the cellular respiration process for plants. So while animals, will eat food that has glucose in it and breathe in oxygen and use oxygen and glucose to produce ATP energy. Plants will take in the carbon dioxide and water and convert that into glucose and oxygen. It is the opposite process. You can see this is mirrored. 
But you can see right here it says glucose plus oxygen converts to carbon dioxide in water. This is the process animals go through to get energy. They take in glucose and oxygen and go to and create carbon dioxide and water. Photosynthesis is the opposite process for plants where they take in carbon dioxide and water and create glucose and oxygen. Right now we're only looking at animal cells, but it's a bit of background information so you can understand this concept a bit more. So the process can be summarized as glucose plus oxygen turns into carbon dioxide and water. During this process, the energy stored in glucose is transferred, in, is transferred to ATP. Energy stored in the bonds between phosphate groups of the ATP model. Energy is stored in the bonds between the phosphate groups of the ATP molecule. When ATP is broken down into ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and, and, and inorganic phosphate, energy is released. When ADP and inorganic phosphate are joined to form ATP, energy is stored. During cellular respiration, about 36 to 38 ATP molecules are produced for every glucose molecule. So I'm going to highlight that because it answers another one of our questions. How much usable energy is extracted from one glucose molecule? Our answer is right here, about 36 to 38 ATP molecules. Okay. So then down at the very bottom, it gives us the chemical equation for um, what we just went over, that glucose and oxygen turns into carbon dioxide and water. You can see it's mirrored down here, but this is just showing you the chemical formulas. It's saying the same thing as the glucose and oxygen up here. And again, I'm sorry, it's backwards, but you can kind of understand. This is the same thing as this up here, just with chemical names. Okay, so, our summary, through the process of cellular respiration, the energy in food is converted into energy that can be used by the body's cells. I'm gonna highlight that because this is important summary information. During cellular respiration, glucose and oxygen are converted into carbon dioxide and water, and the energy is transferred to ATP. I'm also going to highlight this because these are the two big key concepts that I need to know from this article. Okay, now I've answered some of the questions for you. A couple of them, you will have to go online. And you can see right here, there's a YouTube link for a YouTube video. It's a very quick one minute video and it'll have some extra information for you and you'll be able to answer every question after you watch that video. There's going to be Two questions, they're going to be a little difficult to answer without the video. Um, so that will clear things up for you. Otherwise, we're doing the exact same thing we do in class whenever we have a reading. We are highlighting important information. We are writing down our notes and observations and the sides as we go along. And then of course we have our questions at the end that show we mastered the concept. If you have any questions, uh, please email me. It's cole.campion at myrvla.org. Um, otherwise, Good luck on this, and I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, goodbye.